Good afternoon and thank you for choosing Across the Fence. I'm Will Michael in for Fran Stoddard. It is the first Thursday of the month, which means it is recipe time. To begin, we're reminded that many of our friends and neighbors are recovering from July flooding. Sharing food or a simple recipe with those who are impacted can mean an awful lot. And that's especially true for those who've lost all or part of their summer garden. If your garden is thriving, share some of your fresh grown food with those who've lost theirs. Now, some garden crops are already in and others are still growing. Chef Marco's been out in the garden and he's now in the kitchen, preparing recipes using some summer vegetables. Thank you, Will. Hi, I'm Mark Ayala, and I'm here to share another recipe with all of you. And Will is correct. I am very excited about the summer because, well, summer is when we get all those fresh veggies from our garden and we kind of like change our diet to be somewhat healthier, which is a win-win because we get fresh veggies and we also get all the nutrients from them. This weather has been a little iffy, it's been raining a lot. In fact, uh, a lot of our neighbors in southern Vermont and different parts of the state have been very affected by the rain. Um, however, um, well, the plants are actually kind of liking all this, all this rain. So we're getting a bounty of veggies out there. Um, in fact, my tomato plant is completely out of control. Um, so thinking about the fact that I have a lot of tomatoes and I have a lot of fresh veggies coming in either from neighbors or friends, well, we then have to ask ourselves, what are we doing with these fresh veggies? Uh, you can either can them and preserve them for the future, but you can also make some recipes that are fresh and are ready for your table. And that's how I decided to make something with all those tomatoes and cucumbers. And I came up with a Greek salad. And I call this the best Greek salad because it's so easy to make and the vinaigrette is absolutely delicious. Let me tell you how to put it together. First, you're gonna take one pint grape or cherry tomatoes and you're gonna cut them into bite-sized pieces. So either half or quarter. Then you're gonna take one cucumber, you're gonna peel it, and then you're gonna slice it and cut those slices in half. And up to this point, I'm using tomatoes that came from my own garden and the cucumber I got from a local farm stand. So as I always say, remember to support your farmers, uh, your local farmers and to eat local because I think it's really important for our economy. And most importantly, you know exactly where those veggies came from. Next, you're gonna take half a red onion and you're gonna thinly slice it. And yes, this onion was pretty powerful. I have to say those were not tears of joy. Then you're gonna take six ounces feta cheese and you're gonna cut it into half inch cubes. And now to assemble your salad in a large bowl, you're gonna add the onions, the tomatoes, cucumbers, and you're gonna sprinkle them with one teaspoon dried oregano and half a teaspoon dried parsley. And then toss those vegetables so they're evenly coated. Then you're gonna add one cup Kalamata olives. Then you're gonna add your feta cheese and gently fold them into the rest of the ingredients. And just like that, we have the base of our salad. So now we're gonna make a marinade to bring all those flavors together and blend them with some other summer freshness. You're gonna add the juice of half a lemon, one quarter cup extra virgin olive oil, two tablespoons red wine vinegar, a pinch of kosher salt, and a pinch of black pepper. And you're gonna either whisk it or shake it until all the ingredients are combined and emulsified. And then you're going to add it to your salad. And look at that. Does that not look delicious? And the fact that all these veggies came from um, a local garden makes it even better. And I am admittedly not a great gardener. However, I do take advantage of the Master Gardener program that UVM Extension offers. They answer all of my questions 
when it comes to gardening and on their website they have tips they have like a lot of resources and you can actually enroll in their programs and become a master gardener yourself okay so now that we have salad now it's time for the main dish and what other vegetable is plentiful in vermont during the summer zucchini of course and i remember when i first moved to vermont many 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 years ago uh, someone told me as a joke that uh, vandalism around here is finding a whole bag of zucchini in the back of your car because some neighbor left it there because they had way too many and nobody else will take it and i'm telling you with recipes like this one i will take all that spare zucchini from your garden because this cheesy mozzarella zucchini quiche is the stuff of dreams it is so good i wish you could smell it and it's super easy to make because we're taking a few shortcuts. So let me tell you how to put it together. First, you're gonna spray a pie pan with nonstick spray. Then you're gonna unroll your crust and crimp the edges nicely. Then for the filling, you're gonna chop one onion and then you're gonna thinly slice zucchini until you get three to four cups. In a medium saucepan, you're gonna add a little bit of oil and three tablespoons butter. Once the butter is melted, you're gonna add one teaspoon dried basil, one teaspoon dried oregano, and you're gonna let them cook until they're fragrant. Then you're gonna add your chopped onion and cook it for about three minutes until it's translucent. Then you're gonna add your zucchini and cook it until it's tender, but not mushy. And that is the most important part of this recipe. You don't want to overcook that zucchini because, well, if you overcook it, by the time you put it in the oven with your quiche, it's just going to uh, look like a mush. Then to a small bowl, you're gonna add half a cup milk and three eggs. And you're gonna beat them until they're well combined and pale yellow. Then to your crust, you're gonna add two cups mozzarella cheese. You're gonna to top it with your veggies. And finally, you're gonna add your egg and milk mixture. Bake it at 400 degrees for 40 to 60 minutes or until a knife inserted near the center comes out clean. And I don't want to toot my own horn, but look at that quiche. It looks absolutely beautiful. And it is that easy to have a meal that uses some of those fresh veggies that you have, that you have in your garden and that is delicious and nutritious, which is one of the most important things. So we're gonna put it here in our plate, and then we're gonna add some of our salad to make it a whole meal. All these fresh veggies that you know exactly where they came from. And um, as I said, it's, it's just a refreshing change from all those processed foods. So since we're kind of like being really good with eating our veggies and everything, I decided to splurge a little bit with the dessert. So I decided to make a banana bread cobbler. And I know that bananas are not necessarily something that you're um, growing in your backyard, but uh, bananas are, you know, available most of the most of the year, and um, right now they're actually kind of fresh at the grocery store. So let me tell you how to put it together. To a bowl, you're gonna add one cup self-rising flour, three-quarter cup sugar, one cup milk, half a cup melted butter, and you're gonna whisk it until well combined. Then you're gonna take four medium-sized ripe bananas, and you're gonna slice them. Then you're gonna add the bananas to your batter and fold them carefully. This is gonna come out almost like banana bread in a way. That's why it's a banana bread cobbler. To make it a cobbler, obviously, we need to have a streusel topping. So let me tell you how to put that together. In a medium-sized bowl, you're gonna add half a cup self-rising flour, one cup uncooked regular oats, half a cup light brown sugar, 
half a cup softened butter, and then you're gonna mix it. You can either use a fork, but I prefer to take my ring off and use my hands to incorporate it all. Then, to a grease eight by eight pan, you're gonna add the batter, and you're gonna top it with a streusel topping. Then you're gonna bake it at 375 degrees for 40 to 45 minutes or until golden brown. And in less than an hour, you have a delicious dessert that everyone is going to enjoy. Wow, that looks really nice. And because we don't have enough calories in there, I am gonna to top it with a little bit of caramel. And check that out. Does that not look absolutely delicious? I really hope you give this recipe a try and give all of these recipes a try because um, they're great recipes. They're it's fresh food from our gardens. Um, we know exactly where it came from. And on that note, remember to follow Across the Fence on social media. So follow us on Twitter, subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get all the latest updates right on your phone or your computer and like our Facebook page uh, so you can get all these recipes and all the content from across the fence. And on that note, all I'm gonna say is enjoy your food, enjoy your fresh veggies from the garden, and also remember to let me know how you like these recipes, if you make any modifications, and how you make them yours. Happy cooking. Mmm. Always something tasty and timely from the kitchen of Chef Marco. Thank you, Marco. And that's our program for today. We know you have choices, so thanks for choosing us. I'm Will Michael, inviting you to join us back here each weekday afternoon for another visit across the fence.